Hello and welcome to another event video looking at the rewards coming for the upcoming Fall Guys crossover in Final Fantasy XIV at the launch of patch 6.51 on October the 31st, 2023. The new special site went live with all of the information on the rewards. It says conquer the courses and seize the crown. This page will be linked in the description for your leisure. It says rumble and tumble in a new gold saucer attraction. Unfortunately, this does have an event period. It is not a permanent addition to the gold saucer and will be taking place from the 31st of October with the launch of patch 6.51 and lasts until Sunday the 31st of December at 2.59 GMT or that's Monday the 1st of January 2024 at 1.59 AEDT. There's a few images here, some of which we've seen before, but essentially what it is is get from point A to point B. Point B is a finish line, and your path is blocked by lots of spinning contraptions, balls swinging across the map, AoEs to avoid the usual fare if you've played Fall Guys. If you haven't, essentially it plays a little bit like Total Wipeout or maybe Banzai if you've ever seen that as a kid. There's another image showing that recurring themes from Final Fantasy history and characters will be also involved in here. We've seen on the main trailer Yojimbo, we've got Fungar here, and then of course there are also different rounds for these events. So one of the rounds in the real Fall Guys game involves you teaming up temporarily to put as many crystals in your team's area, with the opponent teams being able to steal those, it would appear that there is a similar minigame on one of the rounds to that, not just a jumping puzzle. This last image on this section then shows some of the rewards, with two brand new minions, a Fall Guys guy, and a Peglin, as well as a outfit, we'll come to that in a moment. If we scroll down, to participate in this you just simply need to have created a character, and have leveled up to level 15. At that point you need to go to Uldar, and unlock the gold saucer itself through the It Could Happen To You questline. If you're unfamiliar with this, you need to be level 15, and you must have had access basically to airships to go around the world. Once you reach Uldar, you can find the well-heeled youth at X9.6, Y9.0 to start this. Once you've unlocked the gold saucer and you've gone there, you can find a brand new plus quest called Just Crowning Around. This is available to all characters level 15 and above, of course to anybody who has unlocked the gold saucer. This is from the new NPC, Luena. This will be at X4.8, Y6.1 over here. This then will basically entail you to queue in, presumably through the same NPC, into the actual Fall Guys event. This is confirmed during the Famitsu interview to not always be up, so this will presumably be much like Gates. It says join a Blunderville show, and then all challengers will gain this new MGF currency, which is Gold Saucer Fame, a new form of token currency. A lot of people who have done the Moogle Tome events will be familiar with something like this. And then essentially when you've got quite a lot of that captured, we then go and exchange for prizes. This can be found at the new Blunderville Square, located at X3.8, Y3.1 in the Gold Saucer, with the MGF Trader on the Blunderville Square. A new NPC and a new location. There also appears to be a retainer bell there as well, which is pretty useful. Let's look at the event rewards then. First of which, we have a set of gear. This set of gear is actually not just one set. There are actually many different components. Each of the components to the outfits do actually cost separate amounts of currency. This image shows the brand new mount, which is absolutely bonkers. I can't wait to get a hold of that, which appears to be an inflatable rhino. Then we have some uh, previous, we've seen this already, but the Peglin minion and the Fall Guys minion and some of the gear. And then we've got the housing items. So if you wanted to make your own assault course, your own Fall Guys event area in your house, your FC house, you totally can. Showing inflatable walls, flags, bouncy poles, you know, floating crowns, and then this hammer, which presumably is a wall-placed item and hopefully has the interaction, interaction with it uh, to make it work. That would be really cool. So these items will cost you a varied amount of MGF, but they've been fairly generous with how much things cost. For example, the knit cap is 410, the parker 410, bottoms, shoes, crown, crown, 410 each. 
So the exact same cost for the crowns or any of the pieces of individual gear is exactly the same cost as the inflatable rhino, the Riez identification key, also for 410 fame. This also includes the brand new emote, the ballroom etiquette embracing blunders. If we look at this particular video very briefly, you will see that embracing blunders is basically biting your nails, worrying about something, and then flapping your hands in happiness. So it's definitely unique, something I've never seen, but uh, it's adorable. Can't wait to get that one personally. There's one more look at that in case you're wondering what that looks like. Just absolutely daft. Can't wait. So all of those things, the major things, basically cost the same amount each. Then we've got two minions. Each of the minions costs 350 each, both the pink bean and the penguin. The housing items will cost you 220 each, including the floating crown, the flag, donut bumper, padded wall, rainbow, and hammer. Additionally, for 220, you can also get the orchestrion roll for the actual Fall Guys theme, which we've been playing at the start of this video throughout the background. Additionally to that, for 200, you can actually get uh, individual each uh, framers kits. There are three new framers kits for Fall Guys, so presumably this comes with all kinds of accents and details, all of those 200 each. Then we have a standard rationing manual for 200, gold saucer etherite tickets for 200, and then we have the rest being dies. The three more expensive dies from the Sky Builder scripts, the Gunmetal Black, Pearl White, and Metallic Brass, will cost you 750 each. There's Ruby Red and Cherry Pink, Canary Yellow, Vanilla Yellow, Dragoon Blue, and Turquoise Blue, also for 150 each as well. It says MGF can only be obtained during the event period, so you doesn't say anything about spending it outside of it. So whilst we still have a time-limited, you know, event period session to get these, it does appear that we'll be able to spend them beyond that, but not earn them. Yoshi P said in various interviews, including Famitsu, that this wasn't going to be something that sticks around forever. However, in a recent interview in a QA, and a they did mention how they're planning to have different seasons of this, or it rotate in and out. So presumably this is not the only time this will be in a game, but again, we need further confirmation of that on a Lodestone article or a news bulletin for us to see that in writing. But yeah, in short, I'm quite happy for this. I'm really excited. It does appear to be a bit of a grind, especially with the time-limited nature. A lot of people are probably a little bit put off by that, but at least the items are pretty much the same sort of cost. Now, it depends how many MGF you get per just attending. Presumably, you get more MGF for winning the rounds. But, um, yeah, it needs to, you know, it remains to be seen how easy this is going to be or if uh, if this is going to be quite a, quite a slog. Anyway... Let me know what you're excited for, if at all anything from here. Personally, I think the minions and the mount are my most anticipated items, and I can't wait to do a bit of jumping puzzle fun. Much love, link in the description, and I'll see you all next time.